Today, aside from the two-run home run that he had, he hit the ball hard three or four other times. But up and down that lineup, they can really score some runs, as we saw last night. And it all starts with this guy at the top of the order right here, center fielder John Spikerman. You know, Spikerman comes into this at bat, hitting well over 400. Had a hit last night. And the key to success against this team is really keeping him off the base path. Now we just talked about how this Oklahoma offense last night really went with runners on base. Especially in the second half of the game last night, they were able to execute and bring the traffic that they could produce around the base pass. And that's what it takes when, it, when you get into this conference situation. It's execution and who can make those little plays and have the big hit with men out there. Spikerman lines it to deep left field. Maxwell on the run, right against the fence, makes the catch. Right in front of the College World Series 2010 sign. And that's a nice play by Maxwell. That ball's got some spin on it heading away from him, but he stayed with it and on the wet field made a nice grab. Now the flag's laying still right now, but this ball just continued to carry out to true left field into the corner and a really nice job, as you mentioned, by Maxwell of navigating the warning track. It's wet out there. We're going to be talking about it all night. You see him tracking with that ball and able to reel it in right in front of the wall. Breaking ball for a strike. And again, we've seen a few pitches to start this game from Klecker that are above the belt, and that's not where he wants to live. But he delivers a strike here to Bryce Madrin, the right fielder. That's a little bit more where he would like it, I'm sure. Yeah, and just, some of it depends on the count as well. You know, the, the pitch before is 0-0 count. He's starting him off trying to get a glove strike there. That one more trying to get the swing and miss over the top. And we've seen from Klecker, he's got a couple different breaking balls as he's bringing out this year. Got the swing and miss on that pitch. 94 mile an hour fastball. Well, Klecker amped up a little bit to start this ball game. I was talking to Dave Lawn before the game. And uh, he said the problem that the pitchers have had so far this year is there's a check swing. They did not swing, according to Casey Moser over at third base. But he said strike one's been a problem for our pitching staff. We're pitching from behind too many times. And Dave said we've got to really get, we've been working on it. We've got to get that fixed. We've got to get strike one. And he said, you know, we went to the bullpen last night. I, you know, I tell the pitchers, you got to get strike one. You know, we, we got to be pitching from ahead because our entire philosophy is working from ahead in the count. And we weren't doing it. And this goes without being said, but it's also just a, it's such an advantage to, to be up in the count with a strike from the pitching side as well. It just opens up so many doors. And with as good as offenses are becoming, especially you talk about Oklahoma, a great offense top to bottom. That's a great fastball in the inner half. Another nice fastball, 93 miles an hour. And that's the first strikeout of the game for Cole Klecker. And I see Klecker going here, just bringing this one right back over the inside. And that arm side run, with, especially on a fastball, you bring it into a left-handed hitter. Sometimes you feel like it's going to be too far in there, but the pitcher runs it back over. It's a really nice pitch by Klecker, especially in a full count to get Madrin. Eastern Carmichael at the plate. Was the catcher last night, the DH this evening for the Sooners. And Klecker gets ahead, nothing and one. Carmichael had a base hit in five plate appearances last night. Also scored a run. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Oh, excuse me, missed outside, one and one. Carmichael from up the road and Prosper. Batting average above 400 here in the early part of the year. Fouls that went to the screen. McClecker ahead now, ball and two strikes. Well, we saw Tolley last night with the fastball, able to dominate this lineup the first time around. And you see Carmichael choking up on them. Bat. That's something we've seen a lot of from the Sooners last night. You don't see a lot of that in college baseball anymore, but the Sooners, when they get to two strikes, they just kind of choke up on the bat and try to put the ball in play. And yeah, you'll see it'll be much more pronounced with 
different players, but Carmichael, one of those guys, I mean, it's two or three inches up the bat. And what he's trying to do is really just shorten up, be quick to the baseball, avoid the long swing strikeout. He's trying to be a bit more reactive to some of what Klecker's throwing. One, two. Yeah. Two, two, rather. Check swing, and Blake Felix says he did not go around over at first base. Full count now on Carmichael. Yeah. And Klecker just misses off the plate. That'll bring up after hit a few balls hard. You just mentioned that was his fourth home run of the year. He leads the Sooners in that category. We talked about it last night. It's a little surprising. They have 16 home runs as a team, which is something that in the past we didn't see from Oklahoma. As you see Schneider, the senior out of California, 368 batting average to go along with those four home runs. But you know, usually Oklahoma was a team that relied heavily on the long ball, not so much the last couple of years. Yeah, just to put that into perspective, the Horn Frogs have 17 home runs on the year. The only team in the Big 12 with less than the Sooners is Baylor at 12. And they're just finding different ways to do it offensively. They like to do it with chaos on the base pads. Good breaking ball from Klecker. To even things up at a ball and a strike. But then we saw last night the key to it really was just situational hitting. They were able to have more hits with traffic on the base paths. And you'll hear us talk about it a bunch, but that's really what it ultimately comes down to, especially when you get the level of competition like this that evens out in conference play. And under Skip Johnson, who's a, a pitching guy, they've relied a lot more on their arms to keep the games close and then figure out a way that they can score some runs. And they've been pretty, very productive doing that, just not via the long ball. Close play over at first base, Carson Blowen applying the tag, but a little bit late. started then stopped the ball fouled off to the right side out of play a ball and two strikes now on Schneider Reggie Willits former major leaguer is the one who runs this offense for Oklahoma and he does an outstanding job and again his philosophy a little bit like TJ Bruce is we would just do whatever we need to do to get runs across the plate if it means choking up a little bit with two strikes and trying to go the other way then that's what we'll do Fouled again on a good breaking ball. Oklahoma 11 and 6 on the year, but they're 4 and 0 oh in the Big 12. They swept UCF last weekend. Of course, won last night. TCU undefeated going into league play, but just 1 and 3 in the Big 12 so far. Looking to turn that around. Of course, they were picked to win the league. That pitch is up and away. A lot of baseball left to be played, though. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it's certainly a dangerous spot for the Horned Frogs here now. You know, those series that you have at home, those are ones that you usually chalk up in your mind, at least, going into the year. That Okay, you know, those are ones that we're trying to plan on winning that series. We'll take two good outings here for the Horned Frogs to try and do just that. Bouncer played by Silva. An easy throw across for the final out of the inning. Who had a great outing his first time out, but uh, struggled his last couple of times. Peyton Chatnier fouls it off. Well, Chatnier got off to such a terrific start for the Horn Frogs. He slowed down since. The senior out of Cypress, Texas, transferring from Ole Miss. You see the batting average there to 246. Old for his last 17. He's continued his on-base streak because he's been able to walk three walks during that uh, thing. Last hit for him came in the first inning of the game against Kansas last weekend. And it, that's a long time for Chatnier to be hitless. And it's no coincidence that 
as he's not been hitting, the Horn Frogs have not been winning. Well, he was in the middle of so much of that offense. If we talked about the, the really the spark plug role that he played, he, not only was he hitting the baseball well, the three home runs came at opportune times for the Horn Frogs. He did it on the base paths as well. So as your batting average is dropping, as is your on base percentage to a certain extent, as much as he's not been out there, TCU's been challenged to try and continue the offensive output that we had seen over the first couple of weeks. Takes a pitch on the inside corner for a strike, and that's when you can tell he's a little bit out of sorts. That pitch that is on the inner part of the plate, he's been taking a lot for strikes. Early on, he was able to do some damage with it. Sends this one towards the gap in right center field, but it's going to hang in the air, and a nice running catch made by Spikerman. And with Spikerman out in center field, you got to hit the ball on the line because he can absolutely fly. You see, this is one that just gets in on Chatney a little bit, and, and that's been some of the struggle over the last week or so. It's the timing. He's in that mode where it's easy. He's either a bit early or a bit late. This is one that got in on him, and to the point about John Spikerman, you're right. With as much experience as he has, been a part of the College World Series team at Oklahoma a couple of years back, and plays really good baseball out there. It's going to be tough to find something that hits the ground out there in center field. Sam Myers at the plate. And the freshman's had a really good start to his TCU career. Takes a strike at the knees. Myers finds himself down in the count. 0 2, the freshman from Cyprus. See the batting average of 321, has a home run. Burton tried to get him to chase a breaking ball. Fouled it off. Down a fastball, a little bit late on it, 96 miles an hour. You see that little bit of a drop down arm slot from Girton. He's got good velocity. It would look like he'd be difficult, especially for a right handed hitter, the way he kind of bends his body and then. Comes from that lower slot, yeah, like you said. Depending upon what he goes to, the pitch is going to have a little bit more arm side run than you otherwise might expect. Saw that one that Myers just fouled off at quite a bit. Going all the way back to the backstop. Full count. On Sam Myers here with one out and the base is empty. Got him swinging. Took something off that pitch. Myers down on strikes for the second out here of the inning. You know, it's just a really nicely placed fastball. You see it right on the outside black, and it's one that's too close to take. If you're Myers, but that's just. A fastball that gets the freshman on the outer part of the plate. A really nice pitch from Girton to get his second out of the first inning. Curtis Byrne steps in. Lead on that pitch. And Girton with good velocity here to start the ball game off. Byrne with a couple hits last night. An average back up over 300. Another fastball he fouls off. That hit him. He'll go down to first base, and you could see that hurt. 95 mile an hour fastball. I'm not sure if it caught him on the pad or not. Well, the home plate umpire Michael Banks signaled that he's going down to first base. Looked like that was probably off the knob of the bat. You see, looks like it got Curtis on the bottom hand there. He wears that hand guard that you're starting to see a little bit more. As this ball just one that gets away. Looks like that's right off the knob of the bat, but at least for the time being, Curtis Burns walking down to first base. Skip Johnson not asking the umpires to look at it. They 
kind of heard that little tick sound. That's why I thought it might have been off. One of the I'm a little surprised players. that there's not even a question there from the Oklahoma dugout because of that exact sound. But nonetheless, looks like we're going to continue here, and it'll be two on and a man over at first base. Logan Maxwell, the hottest horn frog, with a swing and a miss at a high fastball. Steady diet of fastballs pretty much so far from Brendan Girton. Maxwell, the junior out of Lima, Ohio. Talked about his batting average at the top of the broadcast, how good it, he's been. And really, by far and away, pretty much the most consistent hitter from day one for the Horn Frog. Yeah, you just talked about some of the struggles that Chatnier has had of late. You know, Silva, Bowen, Brunson has been in that mix as well for the Horn Frog. This one gets away and burns. Will be able to slide up into scoring position himself. But for Maxwell, he really has been that consistent bat in the middle portion of this lineup, obviously up to 421 now, and we're a month plus into the season. Wild pitch by Curtin. Third wild pitch he's thrown this season. And working out of the stretch, he's missing high here. You know, these are those situations that you'll take note of over the course of the game. Whoever executes in these type of situations more frequently tonight is going to be the team that comes out with the victory. Ball four. And that's how you can tell somebody's really seen the ball well. These pitchers aren't way out of the strike zone necessarily, but he, Maxwell's doing a great job of just laying off those high fastballs. And yeah, the easy thing to do is, is to try and force it on a pitch that's outside of the zone. Maxwell has taken his walk, and that'll bring Tolley to the plate. And he's another one who the Horn Frogs have been trying to get going with the bat in his hand. An opportunity here with two outs and a couple of men on, trying to get this scoring started today. Yeah. Tolley takes high for ball one. You know, Peyton Tolley's the guy we've been waiting on to get the bat going. The junior out of UConn, Oklahoma, pitched really well last night. You need to say that right out of, off the top. But you see the batting average, not where he would want it to be, nor really the power numbers where he would want it to be. He had an unbelievable fall, and, and in the lead up to the season, he was also just crushing baseballs. That has not been the case since the season started, but it, it's there, you know it's there, and it's only a matter of time before it shows up as Skip Johnson's gonna come out and have them. It's been a little bit of a revolving door at that DH spot. Here's the 2-0. Got a fastball and swung through. Another pitch, though, that was up. Little tapper back to the mound, bobbled. But the play still made by the pitcher, Girton. As he is not a factor and won't be for the rest of the weekend. Tomorrow's game, 1 o'clock. Here at uh, Lupton Stadium, the first pitch from Klecker misses inside, ball one to Anthony McKenzie. The Oklahoma first baseman out of Houston, Texas. Has a home run to go along with 265 batting average. Klecker missing on the first two offerings. If there's been a difference in Cole Klecker from last year to this, that one is fouled off. It's the fact that he has been missing on a lot of these uh, pitches early in counts, and he's fallen behind, and he's elevating the ball, where last year it seemed like he was always ahead in the count, keeping that ball down, just they were beating it into the ground. The bats wouldn't even last more than three, four pitches. No, and it's that type of rhythm and, and momentum that he brought to the mound that, that garnered the Preston Morrison-type comparisons if you're a Horn Frog fan. Good breaking ball there. You know, it felt like that every time that he was on the mound, week in, week out, it was strike one, strike two, strike three, or it's a ball in play, and the at-bat last 10 seconds of, of real time. 
and that's tough to deal with with a hitter when you've got a guy that's such a strike thrower and it's always at the bottom of the zone. There's a good pitch. Got the foul tip from McKenzie, and he's down on strikes. Oh, this is exactly what Klecker's trying to do with this slider here. You see he starts it up kind of mid-thigh and then just snaps it off down low. And just a really good pitch, and McKenzie not able to hold up. That's the height that Cole Klecker wants to work at, and that's where his pitches have the most depth to him. Jackson Nicholas, the second baseman in now. First pitch swing, lifts it foul and out of play. Nicholas hitting 370. One thing you notice as we go through the lineup, a lot of upperclassmen in the lineup for the Sooners. It's kind of different than TCU when you look up and down the lineup for the Horn Frogs. There's a lot of freshmen who play on a regular basis for TCU, but a lot of seniors and juniors in the lineup for Oklahoma. They've been through it. Looks like a pretty good pitch, but no call from home plate umpire Michael Banks. Not a bad idea with the changeup. Just brought it a little bit too far down and out. Clucker shaking off a couple of pitches. He didn't like the little pitch selection. Gets the pitch he wants and fires a strike. And that tells you that he's shaking the slider there. He's starting to get a good feel for that release point and the grip on that pitch. Trying to bust him inside with a fastball. Missed off the plate, and it's full three and two. And you see what he's trying to do with that sequence. He goes with the slider away, gets the called strike to make it 2-2. And that's got you looking for spin and out over the plate as a hitter. And you go back inside with a fastball, just pulls on it a little bit too far. One hopper right back to Klecker, who spears it. And there are two outs. That's how you feel in your position if you call Klecker on the one hopper. And Klecker just maneuvers through this at bat really well. Just mentioned the sequence, and he comes back now with the count full. And it's a pitch to hit. It's up higher than he would have liked, but he's able to spear that one, as you noted, and field his position to get the second out of the second inning. Kendall Pettis. Left fielder at the plate. Nice ball one. Pet is a senior at Chicago, Illinois. Had a hit last night, also drew a walk. One for three, officially in the game. He was kind of in the middle of the scoring late for the Sooners. Sooners broke the game open with a four-run seventh inning against the TCU bullpen. They Scored the four runs on five hits. There was an error that really helped things along. And that was the difference in the game. That one inning really cost the Horn Frogs who were winning up until that point. Popped up behind home plate. Curtis Byrne tracking. Without Meredith Montgomery, none of us could have operated at all. 800 games, especially, you know, a woman in a men's sport here at the collegiate level. Very tough to do what she's done, and we're all incredibly appreciative of, of all the work that she puts in day in, day out. And it's uh, Women's History Month this year, and a good time to honor her and all the work that she puts in. And we all know that we would never get where we're supposed to be on time or have food without Meredith <laughs> Montgomery doing her job. She is really good at what she does, and we're thankful for her being part of this uh, organization. Ryder Robinson leading it off, the freshman out of Cedar Hills, Utah. He got off to a sluggish start. Had some big shoes to fill with fellow Utah third baseman, Braden Taylor. But uh, he's really picked it up and he's kind of, you know, the third base has been interesting for the Horn Frogs. At the beginning of the year, Robinson started the first couple of games and then um, Jack Basier got an opportunity over there. Chops this one over the third base. Nice short hop pick by the third baseman, Michael Schneider, and he's able to get it across for the out. Good play by Schneider over at third base, but uh, 
Robinson's kind of grabbed the whole of his position at third base. Yeah, he really has. And you know, he gets on top of this one and chops it. This is a nice play by Snyder, especially given how wet the field is. Tough to make this play when the ball is wet like that. You don't really have time to get a grip on it. You've got to pick through it on the short hop and get it out of your hand. Fastball high. Anthony Silva at the plate for TCU. Tony had a great freshman year. Numbers not quite where he would like them to be, probably at this time. He's, along with um, a couple of the other Horn Frogs in this lineup, struggling a little bit since conference play started. The lineup early in the year, we talked about how deep it was. But with a couple of these guys struggling, we're starting to see Silva and Bowen hitting further down in the order than we're used to seeing their names as they try to work through some of these sophomore slumps that they're in. And it's one of, those, one of those phases that you just have to try and weather the best you can. Everybody's going to go through it at some point in time. It seems like we didn't see either of those guys go through it at all last year throughout the Horn Frog season. And he goes around on that pitch that was up. And Silva down on strikes. I see Gurton goes to the slider there, and this one backs up a little bit. It's up in the zone, but Silva's certainly not looking for it. And sometimes that backup breaking ball is even more effective than the one you were trying to throw. Just doesn't move as you expect it to as a hitter, and Gurton able to get the strikeout. Here's Carson Bowen. First pitch swing, listed in the air, center field. Easy chance for the center fielder, Spikerman, and it's a three up and three down inning. Eight, nine, and one for Oklahoma here against Klecker. He starts. Mudler off with a breaking ball for a strike. Mudler was not in the lineup last night. Behind the plate here today, the junior from Johns Creek, Georgia. Couple of home runs. Left-handed hitter against Klecker. Ball and a strike on him. We talk about the home field advantage, and that's why the TCU's like a lot of schools, wants to play postseason baseball here at home because of that record that they've had at Lupton Stadium throughout the years, and especially in postseason. This is a tough place to win ball games for the opposition. We saw it last year when TC hosted the Super Regional against Indiana State. You get close to 10,000 people in here, and uh, it's loud. In the air, left field, Maxwell with an easy chance as he backs up and Puts the squeeze on it. The two-deck stadium, you've seen it from uh, center field when we show you the wide shot from time to time. It's a double-deck stadium, and all the seats are very close. She has a good look at it to the field. So when it's jam-packed in here, there's a lot of noise that filters down onto that baseball field, especially late in games. Yeah, getting to play at a lot of different ballparks. And, you know, all of them in the Big 12. It certainly is one that can get the loudest depending upon the situation fouled off the left side you know you talk about home field advantage advantage and, and you know, what is it what does that mean and you know there's some parks you go to play at and you don't necessarily feel the presence even though the crowd might be sizable just depending upon the layout of the ballpark and whatnot there are others where it's a really intimate setting it feels like everybody's just right on top of you and that's the one that can start to creep onto opposing players there's a strike I was talking to Oklahoma radio broadcasters, Toby Rowland. He said, this is, uh, you know, he goes, I'm going to miss coming here when we go to the SEC. He goes, this is always a great environment, you know, when obviously the weather's keeping people away today. Went around, the ball gets away from Curtis Burns. He's going to have to hustle after it, able to get it and make the throw to first base for the out. He said, you know, every time we come here, it's usually crowded and it's usually loud and it's a really fun environment, you know, to be at. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something that plays into it. You know, the saying around here, Lupton Magic, because there have been so many comebacks over the years by TCU baseball late in games. And obviously it has to do with the players and nothing that the stadium's doing, but... 
There is something about it. Good pitch on the clicker. Spikerman at the plate. Well, Spikerman just has a knack for putting a barrel of the bat on baseballs. He drove a ball to a wall in left field his first time up after a couple of really good swings in last night's game. Clecker trying to sneak the breaking ball on the inner part of the plate. Missed inside again, two and one. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to comment on it just a second ago, but the pitch that Klecker's able to strike Willits out on and Curtis Byrne makes the throw is another really good hard slider. And we've seen him shake to it already tonight. We'll see the second time through this sooner lineup if we see more of those breaking pitches. Fastball back up the middle. And Spikerman comes up with a two-out single. First hit of the ball game for either side. You know, this is what happens. You fall behind a guy like Spikerman. You see this pitch is right thigh height. When you fall down 2-1, don't want to get down 3-1 to Spikerman, so you throw a pitch over the plate, and he just puts it right back up the middle and continues the inning offensively for Oklahoma. Frogs will have to be careful with him over at first base. And he's definitely a threat to steal. Sooners have stolen 27 bases this year. Spikerman has nine of them. going on the first pitch and Klecker misses high. Oh for one for Madrin tonight. Struck out looking his first time to the plate. There's a line drive to right field that is going to be on the grass as Trying to make the play out there was Myers. Couldn't get his glove underneath it. But Connery does a good job to at least keep that ball in front of him and stop Spikerman from trying to score all the way from first base. Yeah, as hard as this one's hit, especially with two outs in the inning, I'm surprised to see the dive. I didn't think he had a chance on it, but you see Myers just able to get the glove on it even after it bounces. And you're exactly right. If this gets past him, there's no help behind him. Madrin would have been running for a long time, and Oklahoma would have gotten their first run on the board. Instead, it's first and third now as Spikerman stops at third base with two outs in the inning. We talked about how fast Spikerman is. The breaking ball missed outside. Ball one to Easton Carmichael, the DH tonight. Here's Spikerman over at third base. He was standing on third base about the time Myers picked the ball up. And he was obviously off on contact with two outs, but he was flying around. So if that ball would have even gotten any further away, he probably would have tried to score a foul back. And Kleck's missing here up again. You know, he had been keeping the ball down, but the last couple of pitchers are elevated, and, and that's what's led to the two base hits. And you see a pretty good portion of these at-bats start off with a fastball that is either on the higher part of the zone or is missing up above, and that's really kind of been the theme for Klecker so far in 2024 and what he was so good at was pitching down around the knees frequently and that's what leads to the early contacts the ground balls the weak contacts around he doesn't necessarily have a fastball that's going to blow by you with velocity so if it's playing up high susceptible to being hit in the air Myers going back still going back turns around finally makes the catch about a half a step from the fence as Carmichael gives that ball a ride. DCU offense. Yeah, two clean innings thus far. He's got a couple of strikeouts that we've seen just one walk. The 9-1-2 for TCU here in the third. Still looking for their first hit. They did have a couple of base runners in the first. Byrne was hit by a pitch and then Maxwell walked immediately thereafter. But neither team able to push anyone around as Brunson takes high ball one. Brunson, another one of those freshmen who got off to a really hot start for TCU. He's cooled off a little bit. As you talked about it last night for a lot of these freshmen. In the first few ball games, they see a lot of fastballs, then all of a sudden 
with all the games being televised, there's a lot of film on them, a lot of tape on them that other teams can start to look at and try to take advantage of. And he's uh, struggled. It's time for him to make an adjustment now. And that's really what this game is about. You know, pitchers adjust, hitters adjust, and then you've got to readjust accordingly. Brunson hits it on a couple of hops. Easy play for the shortstop, and then he throws wide. And Brunson thought he beat the throw. McKenzie did a nice job to keep his toe on the bag somehow as Brunson was flying right past him. A little bit of an awkward play, and it's Willits, the shortstop. We've talked about the speed of the game with some of TCU's freshmen as well, and you get another look at this one with Willits. Brunson hits his ball hard, but he can fly and gets out of the box. See, Willits kind of working around this, takes an extra little bit of a hitch up, and then realizes that Brunson's probably going to beat that throw out if he continues. And I'll tell you what. I don't know about that one over at first base. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, it looked like on the first replay we had that that ball, that uh, the foot might not have been on the bag by McKenzie over at first base, but the pitch is thrown, so that nullifies any chance at a replay review. And that's why you bust it out of the box, even if you hit a ground ball right at a defender. You make him play catch and put the pressure on. Swing and miss by Shotney. And leave him count at one and one. Here's another look at that play over at first base. Yeah, and you see the toe just kind of dragging across. And that look there, maybe he kept, maybe he did keep it on as that toe's coming across the top of the bag. And first base umpire Blake Felix was right on top of it. Yeah, on that replay there, you could see him kind of drag it across the actual top, not the side of the base. When he made the catch. And a really nice job of using his footwork over there by McKenzie to you know, keep contact with the bag while he was trying to reach for that throw that was well on the first base side up the line. And McKenzie doing a really nice job over at first base to get the out. One away. Chatnier 0 for 1. Flew out to center field his first time up. Now 0 for his last 18. There's a strike call. And you can see Peyton just a little out of sorts. Even on some of these takes, he's not just following the ball and tracking the ball all the way into the glove. He's off balance, even as he's just watching the ball into the glove. Foul that one back. Well, it's you know it's tough when you get into any spot. Oh, you know, 18. It doesn't sound like that much, but it, when you're going through something like that, it feels like it's forever, and you can't buy a hit. You're looking for any type of measure of success that can make you feel good. Ball four. He's been able to draw his walks. His on base streak continues. He's reached, reached safely now in 18 straight games. But the, the fact is, he just has barrel compression test. Those are all things that they do prior to the start. Meyer skies this one to shallow right field. Coming on is Madrin. And he makes the catch for the final out of the inning. And that is uh, things like that happen. Yeah. Bunted foul. Now, of course, if you're shot, you can use that to your advantage. Potentially, and get all fired up about it. He didn't argue. So, I mean, it wasn't like he threw a, a fit over there. He's been around the block long enough to know that, that wouldn't get him anywhere. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. And that's, you know, what does that do at that point? Just has to try and focus on playing good defense and figure out what bat that he'll end up using next time up. Michael Schneider at the plate leading things off for Oklahoma here in the fourth. Good breaking ball from Klecker. And he's ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Schneider 0 for 1. Grounded to Silva at short his first time up. Klecker went right back to the breaking ball. That was the breaking ball he throws to try and get the swing and the miss. Didn't look like he's trying to throw that one for a strike necessarily, but maybe to get him out, out in front. On the ground, back through the middle, shot in the air, near second base, makes the play. Nicely done by Carson Bowen on the other side to keep 
his foot in contact with the bag. And it's another ground ball out for Schneider, one out here in the fourth. You see Snyder getting this one. It's out away from him, and Chatagnier able to work through it. And on the run, that throw across the body, but Bowen very similar to what we saw last time out. The umpires are going to come and take a look at this one, but looks like Bowen's got his foot still on. McKenzie, the first baseman at the plate, struck out his first time up. And takes a breaking ball from strike one. The field was covered, so the tarp was on the infield, but there is moisture that builds up on the grass. It's been a hot, I mean, it's been a humid day, obviously, with the rain and everything. So even the infield grass is damp. So when the ball is on the ground, it's picking that moisture up. Obviously, it's not as wet as the outfield was because it was not covered. This field drains really well. Not There's no standing water that we can see on the field. You see what McKenzie did his first time up. He talked a little bit about it last night. You can't think about the fact that the ball's damp. You just have to go about your business and throw it like you normally do. Well, yeah, you know, the, the, saying, the saying that coaches will talk to teams about, you, you can't throw a wet ball hard. And that's something that, you know, as people come up and you're trying, you know, if you're trying to throw a strike across the diamond, you got to be a little bit careful with the grip. You're certainly still going to play the game at full speed it is something you've got to be aware of and these teams do practice it as well you know Oklahoma playing at a turf facility so any rain that comes up there they'll certainly practice out at their field good breaking ball but it missed inside full count now on McKenzie inside not sure if it hit him or not it was close to him he scored a walk so it missed him you look at this inside pitch in you know, three two count Kleckard's trying to go back inside there pulls on it up and in a little bit Kenzie able to get out of the way but it's ball four so the end result the exact same as he makes his way down to first base. Jackson Nicholas at the plate now. First pitch swing, taps it down the first baseline foul. Oh for one for Nicholas tonight. Bounce back to Klecker in the second inning. Casey looking for a double play ball here that would get him out of the inning with one out and a runner at first base for Oklahoma. Scoreless ball game here in the top half of the fourth. Check swing foul. And we talked a little bit about it last night. It seems like every game that these teams have played, all 110 of them, have tension. There are very few games in this series that you know, sometimes they even there'll be a game that'll be one-sided for the first half of the game and all of a sudden the other team will mount some amazing comeback to force the game to be tight near the end on the ground could be to Silva shot in the eight. Bowen double play inning over no runs no hit off of Brandon Girton who's thrown 47 pitches through the first three innings and TC really hasn't had that many good swings off of yet See, be interesting to see how they fare second time around here. Good breaking ball for a strike to Curtis Byrne. You know, Gertner, a guy that comes to Oklahoma via Texas Tech, so he's familiar with Big 12 play and surely many of these Horned Frog hitters as well. Not the first time that they've seen him. Curtis hit by a pitch his first time up. Nothing to count here, two and one. And that hit him. Second time 
tonight. Curtis Burns been hit. And Curtis led down to first base to start the inning off with a one frog. I don't know if there's any question the first time around if that hit Curtis or the bat. This one definitely off that elbow guard. It's like a fastball that just got away. And, you know, at this point in the game, there's no real intent behind that. It's bottom half of the fourth inning in a scoreless ball game in conference play. Just a fastball that gets away a little bit running in from Girton, but the Horn Frogs will take it. It's a leadoff man on base, and with your hottest hitter coming to the plate now, this is where you're trying to get some momentum offensively if you're in the TCU dugout. Logan Maxwell up now for TCU. Takes it high. And you saw Curtis just kind of flexing his hand. It looked like it hit him right on the funny bone there. And even with the pad, and that can make your hand go numb for a little bit. Maxwell walked his first time up. Up in the count here, 2-0. Byrne and Maxwell got on back in the first inning. At the time, there were two men out. Totally bounced back to the box to end the inning. Only two base runners for TCU so far tonight. There's a the strike. Thought that was a little bit low. But Michael Banks with the strike call on that pitch that was at the bottom of the zone. It'll even the count up to two and two. Spoiled a good pitch. Him to foul it off. Keep the bat alive here. And Remain two balls and two strikes on Maxwell. Maxwell choking up just a little bit here with two strikes. Now he's gone back down to the bottom of the handle. Back through the middle, that's a base hit. Maxwell continues to swing a hot bat for the Horn Frogs. First hit in the ball game for TCU, and the first two men reach here to start the bottom of the fourth. And you can just see how simple it is for Logan Maxwell, Maxwell right now. He's choked up a bit with two strikes, but just playing pepper with this one, a fastball in. And puts it right back where it came from on the screws up the middle. And this is good an opportunity as any for the Horn Frogs. Couple of men on and nobody out in the inning. Prime opportunity to try and take the lead here in a game to even the series up. Scott Mulder, a uh, muddler rather, went out to the mound to have a quick word with starting pitcher Brandon Girton. A quick conversation, first time since that second inning that TCU is a runner out at second. Just want to talk about. Now they want to handle things here. Nobody out. That pitch goes between the legs and back to the backstop. And the runners will advance. Well, now an opportunity for TCU to get on the board here. Nobody out. Runners at second and third. And a 1-0 count on Peyton Tolley. And this is where that focus just has to key in if you're Tolley in the box. If you can get a pitch that you can put a good swing on in this at bat, have to think this at bat results in a run in some way, shape, or form. Saw him, he was well behind two fastballs from Girton in his first at bat, tapped it right back to the pitcher. And that ended the first inning. Pass ball charged against Mudler. And now, TCU able to score a run here without the benefit of a hit. Nobody out, the infield's back. Oklahoma give up the run in exchange for an out here and totally goes after a pitch that was in the dirt. And you can see with the first couple of pitches what Girton's trying to do. 
The pass ball was on a slider that was down at the back foot of Tolley, and he goes right back to it here, just brings it back over the plate a little further. They're not trying to give him a pitch that's up. Tolley late, fouled that one off the netting above the TCU dugout. Now it's one and two. And if you're Peyton Tolley here, you take a look at this situation, they're going to basically give you the run if, if you hit it to anywhere but third base. The third baseman, Schneider, was even with the bag, and now he's even backed up a little bit. And, of course, a fly ball would result in a sack fly. So multiple ways that TCU can get a run on the board here without the benefit of a hit. Holy lays off and a nice stop by Muddler behind the plate as he got a chest protector on that one. Didn't quite make it to home plate. And leaving things up at two and two and it wasn't necessarily a bad idea by Gerton. He got the swing and a miss on the pitch that was in a similar spot a moment ago and tried to go right back to it. This one just a little short. Bouncer towards second. This will score the run. Nicholas gets it to first for the out. Coming across Curtis Byrne and TCU has a 1-0 lead. Well, totally does his job as he gets the run in. Now you see this is a fastball and it's another one that gets inside on him. And he's a little bit late on the pitch, but he's able to get the contact down, get it on the ground, and that allows Byrne to score. And while it's not necessarily the result that Peyton Tolley wants, it's a good team out. And TCU able to take a 1-0 lead here in this ball game, the bottom half of the fourth inning. And you see his teammates congratulating him over by the helmet rack there as he takes the glove and helmet off. RBI number 11 for Peyton Tolley. We always talk about those productive outs. That's certainly one of them. Moving over to third on the play was Logan Maxwell. So an opportunity for TCU to score another run here. Infield is in though now. That ball gets between the legs of the catcher. Coming home is Maxwell. He'll score standing up. And it's 2-0. And TCU with a 2-0 lead as they take advantage of their opportunity in the air. Left center field. Moving over to the left fielder Pettis and he makes the grab. For the out, Robinson retired for the second out of the inning. And they'll bring up Anthony Silva as Robinson heads back into the dugout. So Gerton able to come back and get the out. And now Silva will try and get things restarted for the Horn Frogs here with two outs in the inning. And all of a sudden, Gerton's Missing short on some of these breaking balls. Trying to tempt the TCU hitters into swinging at them, but they're coming up short. This one's pulled foul wide of third. The main reason Curtin was effective is to see what Silver's done tonight. He struck out his first time up. In the first few innings was those breaking balls looked like strikes until they got to home plate. Not the case here in this inning. Oh, a little bit better. But missed outside. Foul over the roof. And leaving it up at two and two. You know, baseball is such a funny game and in that you know you, we, you see it all the time pitchers just dealing striking people out and all of a sudden one thing happens and they lose the strike zone and they could go to the next three batters and not be anywhere near the strike zone then all of a sudden they'll get it back again same thing with hitters we've been talking about the struggles of Chatagnier and how he's not been hitting when he gets one hit a little bloop somewhere and all of a sudden boom boom well it's, it's just a game with so much feel on both sides, right? Pitchers, you're trying to replicate the same motion over and over and over again, and you get different grips for different pitches. Hitters, you're trying to feel things up there at the plate and see pitches as well. Silva draws a walk here with two outs in the fourth. He'll make his way down to first base. There's just so many different things and different variables in each of those 
replicable motions, the pitching motion, hitters for their swings and whatnot. And it's such a game of confidence, and you, know, you fail so much on both sides that you, know, you, you would think, well, you know, I hit 400 last year. I should be able to do it this year. And you strike out a couple of times, and all of a sudden you think you're never going to get a hit. Yeah, you realize how hard that is to do. Carson Bowen takes a strike. Carson 0 for 1 flew out to Spikerman in center field his first time up. Silva over at first base with two outs. A couple of runs on the board for the Horn Frogs. Yeah, they've taken a 2 0 lead. TCU led in the middle innings of last night's game. Seventh inning, though, was their undoing. They gave up a four spot, which ended up being the difference in the ball game last night. Oklahoma winning. Silver was leaning, and he's just able to get back. He's got four stolen bases on the year, only been thrown out once. Very short lead as he stretches it out now. Curtin really lost the release point on that pitch. Look like a breaking ball, it just didn't do anything. Now up to 70 pitches. Came into the inning having thrown 47. Time is called. Clock ticked all the way down to zero, so that will result in a ball called on Gurton. And now it's a 3 1 count on Carson Bowen. Ball four, he walked him. So a hit batter, and now two walks in the inning. I'm surprised we don't see Skip Johnson coming out just to maybe settle him down a little bit. Oklahoma does have some activity in their bullpen. As you see the left-hander up there starting to throw. You know, already a couple of runs in here in the fourth for the Horn Frogs. You look at the split from Girton, and now he's right around 50-50 balls to strikes. It's a big chance for Chase Brunson with another RBI out there. Good breaking ball there for a strike on the outside corner. These are those moments that provide the separation in games. Looked like the inning was really kind of coming to an end after TCU was able to cash in those couple of runs. And they start it back up again and get a couple of men on. One big hit can put some separation between the Horn Frogs and the Sooners here. Chopper towards short. Glove by Willits. He goes the short way to second for the out, and that will do it between that 2004 team that won Conference USA. That's a good breaking ball for a strike. So now, Clucker staked to a two-run lead. That's how he fares here in the top half of the fifth inning, facing the bottom third of the Oklahoma batting order. Kendall Pettis leading it off. Another good pitch. That's so, he, too. You get a look at the two different pitches that'll move right to left for Klecker. Starts Pettis out with a cutter here in the first pitch and then goes to that big slider for strike two. Now pitching ahead 0 2. He can do whatever he wants to do here. Goes to the fastball and gets the foul. 0 for 1 for Pettis. Fouled out to catcher Curtis Byrne his first time up. That's what Dave Long was talking about. So much easier to pitch when you're ahead in the count. Trying to get a the chase there. But once you're ahead, you can expand the strike zone a little bit, try to get the swing and a miss. Have a little more leeway to nibble. to the break. 
breaking ball, but missed outside. And it was a good one. It was just a little bit too far away. See Pettis able to hold up on the swing. Bouncer back towards the middle. Chatagne has it. Off balance throw, not in time. Pettis runs too well. And Chatagne had to go too far to make the play on that one. That'll be an infield single for Pettis. That's just tough, tough luck for Klecker on this one. You see it's a pitch away and Ken, Kendall Pettis just chops it right back up the middle. No real chance for Chatagne on this one. He's able to get the glove on it, but they're so far for that ball to travel as he's running on a dead sprint away from first base. Tough to get anything on that throw, and it's a leadoff infield single for Kendall Pettis. Catcher Scott Mudler at the plate. Takes it high for ball one. Mudler 0 for 1. Flew out to Maxwell and left his first time up. Looped foul. That one right down by our cameraman on the third base side. The camera guys have it tough when the ball's coming at them because they don't really see it. They have to try to look over the top of the viewfinder to see the ball. Sometimes it comes right at you and you don't even know it's there. Bouncer through the right side. That's a base hit. Pettis is going to go first to third on the play as the throw from... Myers comes into second base, back-to-back -back hits. And after TCU grabbed the quick lead here in the top half of the inning, all of a sudden Oklahoma coming right back. And see Klecker goes to the changeup here, and this is one that just catches a little bit too much of the plate. Mudler's on top of it, but he's able to pull it into the right field through that four hole on the right side, and you're exactly right. Similar situation that we saw the Horned Frogs just able to capitalize on a couple of men on but nobody out in the inning. We'll see if the Sooners are able to do the same. They were able to do it in the second half of the ball game last night. Allowed them to pick up the win in the opening game of this series. Shortstop Jackson Willits at the plate now. First pitch swing, fouled it back over the roof and out of play. Willits 0 for 1, he struck out swinging back in the third. Well, neither ball in this inning hit hard by Oklahoma, but the both been in the perfect spot. A little ground ball by Pettis up the middle. And then the ball through the four hole, that one foul back. Nothing into the count. Becker was ahead of Pettis before giving up that little infield hit. Trying to backdoor him there, but missed outside. The ball and two strikes. Well, we've seen Klecker want to go back to the fastball in after a pitch like that. We'll see what he does. He can do what he wants to. Up 1-2 against Willits here. Missed way up. Collector up to 77 pitches in the game now. Trying to navigate his way through the fifth inning here. On the ground, Chatagne bobbles it. Can't get it out anywhere as a one scores. And it's a two to one ball game. Runners at first and second. It'll be an error on Peyton Chatagne. It looked like a tailor-made double play ball. Chatagne just couldn't get it into his glove. That's one of those things when it rains, it pours. She this one's hit hard by Willits, but it certainly sets up to be a tailor-made double play. Just takes a big hop on that second one. And you see, I, I would, it looked like he had a chance to still get Willits at first base. Chatagne goes to, for the potential glove flip there. John Spikerman 
who's really tough to double up because of his speed. And he shows bunt here, drops the bunt down, but in foul territory. And that didn't look like a uh, sacrifice bunt by Spikeman. It looked more like he was trying to get one down where he could maybe beat it out. Yeah, guys that have the speed like that, especially Spikerman's a switch hitter, so he's, when he's hitting from the left side, it can be used as a weapon. Not showing Bunt here, and he fouls it off. So again, Klecker ahead of an Oklahoma hitter. Spikerman had a single. Last time to the plate, one for two, also flew out to deep left field. That was leading the game off for the Sooners. A little bouncer to the mound. Klecker will get the out over at first base. The runners will advance. Second and third, one away now. But a good job by Klecker to get the out. Just take the out at this point if you're TCU. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, for Spikerman, this won't go down as a sacrifice in the book, but effectively works the same. It's a nice job by Klecker working away from the dangerous bat of John Spikerman. Infield in here. Try and cut the run off at the plate. This ball's hit to deep right field. See you later. That ball is way out of here. A three-run home run by Madrin, his second of the season, and he gives Oklahoma the lead. And that was a no-doubter. And once again, the big inning comes back to bite TCU after the Horn Frogs were able after the fifth inning. And this has been an Oklahoma team that has been opportunistic at least through the first game and a half here. Line through the right side, base hit. Well, on the first pitch from Hodges, Carmichael deposited it into right field for a, a single. And it was the middle part of the game last night that caused the Horn Frogs some problems. You see Carmichael wasting no time. This is a pitch, a fastball that's down and out, but Carmichael staying on it and going the other way. And you're not hitting 400 a month into the season by accident. Easton Carmichael, it's a nice piece of hitting to continue this fifth inning on for the Sooners. Still only one out. Michael Schneider will be the batter. There goes the runner. The pitch is taken for a strike throw down the second. Not in time. Stolen base for Carmichael. That's his fourth of the year, 28th for the Sooners. And again, they take an opportunity here and get a stolen base to get a runner in scoring position. I see Carmichael just getting a good jump on it. And not the best pitch to throw on for Curtis Byrne as it's down into his glove side. But Hodge is going to have to work here to try and keep this a two-run ball game. Schneider went after that one and missed. Oh, and to the count now on Schneider. He's hitless tonight. He's grounded out twice, once to short, once to second. Got him swinging. Curtis Bernal have to pick it up and throw to first to complete the strikeout. That's a big out for Hodges to get here. The runner has to remain at second base. Now they're two away. And when Hodges has been on this season, it's been because he's had that breaking ball working for him. You talked early on about the night that Michael Snyder had last night. The big home run, a couple of hard hit balls otherwise, but going fishing on the slider down from Hodges is a great pitch to get the two outs. In the dirt, and a nice stop by Curtis Byrne behind the plate. 
Anthony McKenzie. At the plate. Walked his last time up. Struck out back in the second. 0 for 1 officially in the game. Rogers misses high. The count will go to 2 and 0. Pitch on the corner. Well, Hodges trying to keep this game right where it is. Another good breaking ball on the corner. This Oklahoma team has really turned things around once conference play started last weekend. They were seven and six, seven and five rather, heading into conference play. Four and oh in conference play. Had a midweek loss to Oklahoma State this week. But they have really turned things around now that they're in conference play. Kind of the opposite of the way TCU. Started the season off 13 and 0, but it really struggled. Just one and three in conference play. Did have the win against DBU the other night. Bouncer foul. As we said last night, still early in the year in terms of you know, conference. But if you're TCU, you got to be careful here. You lose the game tonight or. Get swept in the series, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a pretty deep hole in the league. Yeah, you get you get into a situation pretty quickly where you don't have games to play with on the conference slate. Strike three called, struck him out. Hodges back doors him. Oklahoma lead as we start the bottom half of the fifth inning. Peyton Chatagnier will lead it off, and he takes strike one. Chatagnier has uh, not had a great night. Only no way to say it. Besides that, he struggled at the plate, made an error last inning. and Last time he was up, he drew a walk and it was called out for using an illegal bat. Looks like he's got a similar style bat here. That pitches in the dirt. Unable to get a confirmation as to exactly what went wrong although you can see the bat right there and he saw the sticker in that last shot you just saw that sticker on the bat and we didn't see that on that other bat yeah it didn't have the sticker before and it was one that was fresh out of the seal potentially trying to change things up a bit and instead he's punched out here and it's just a really nice pitch in from Carter Campbell going inside under the hands of Peyton Chatagnier and Chatagnier struggles to continue again here tonight See this one, you, you just get into that rut mentally. And you've talked about it a couple times already tonight, but it truly feels sometimes like you cannot buy a hit up there. And especially after such a torrid start that we saw from Shot and he was doing everything offensively. You know he's trying to work through that and get back to that form. Sam Myers takes a strike from Campbell. Nothing in one on Myers. 0 for 2 for Sam. He's flown out to right, struck out. Down in the count, no balls and two strikes. Well, for shot yet, he's just going to have to, you know, he's going to have to hit one off the end of the bat that dunks in or something to get him going again. Get back in the right frame of mind. And we know he can get it done, that's for sure. We saw it in the early part of the year. It's just uh, every player goes through it. Myers down on strikes. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Campbell to start the bottom half of the fifth inning. I see Carter Campbell looking really comfortable coming into the game. This ball just tailing down and away from Sam Myers and not able to get the bat on it. 
a couple of batters faced for Campbell, the left-hander out of the bullpen, and a couple of strikeouts for him. He'll face Curtis Byrne here with two outs and the base is empty. And he pours the strike in over the inside corner. Just an 89-mile-an-hour fastball. Curtis has been hit by the pitch twice tonight. He's been up twice, hit twice. Scored a run, that came last inning. After being hit by the pitch to lead the inning off. TCU sent seven men to the plate last inning. Scoring there, two runs, had a 2-0 lead, but it didn't last long. Bouncer back through the middle glove by the shortstop, Willits. The throw is high, and it pulls the first baseman, McKenzie, off the bag. So Burns aboard for the third time in the game. This one comes with two outs. Now you get another look at the play. Burns just chopping this one on top of it. Willett's having a range to the left, and it's another one, Chuck, where he takes a little bit too long as he's running to his left. You see he takes three, four steps with that baseball, and for the second time tonight, it's an errant throw. McKenzie was able to keep the foot on the bag the first time around, but the freshman out there at shortstop showing that he's holding on to the ball a little bit too long tonight. And this one comes back to bite him. Extends the inning here in the fifth of the Horn Frogs. And those extra, that extra step or two forces him to try and throw the ball harder to get it over there. And it's just not good for your accuracy. Logan Maxwell takes a strike. Let's see if TCU can take advantage of the error here. Maxwell has walked and singled up the middle. Well, he's off a breaking ball. You know, conversely, when you look at Maxwell, even the way he's taking these pitches, he's seeing the ball really well. well. I just had the thought that that's a pitch that he swings at if this is a year ago, two years ago. Just really showing the discipline at the plate. Has a plan as he's going in. And this is one that he takes, and it's even still a little bit up. But it's one that now he gets to one and two, and we saw him back in his last at bat, back in the fourth inning. Got the two strikes, he shortened up and just put a line drive back up the box. We'll see what he's able to do now against Carter Campbell. Good take. There's a breaking ball that looked pretty good coming out of Campbell's hand. Ended up in the dirt. Back through the middle. They had him played perfectly. The shortstop slipped the throw to first. Maxwell wants him to take a look at this one. He felt he beat it out. The umpires are going to tell Oklahoma they got to stay on the field here. And again, Willett's going to his left. This time he slipped on the outfield grass. If we take another look at this. You see it's another throw that's just floating high. Looked like he beat it out there. Maxwell was pretty sure he crossed the bag. You can see the safe sign, and he immediately put his hand through. Then he goes after the first pitch breaking ball. And we've seen that a lot from Peyton Coley as he's been struggling here in the early part of the season. 0 for 2 today, had a ground out that resulted in RBI in the last inning. But it's almost like he's over anxious. He's just swinging at the first pitch regardless of where it is. Went right back to that same breaking ball. This time, totally able to take it. And a fastball on the corner, and it's one and two. And this is where, if you're totally, you've really got to challenge yourself to stay on a baseball. We've seen him out in front. We've seen him behind fastballs. It's 1-1-2. One, one and two. We're just trying to extend the inning. Got a piece of it to stay alive. By the way, Maxwell credited with a base hit on that ball up the middle. Arnold's in first and second. Two outs for Tolley here. TCU trying to 
Get a little bit closer, trailing 4-2. Had the lead heading into the top half of this inning, but gave up a four spot. Curtis Burns out at second base after the error on the shortstop, Willits. Maxwell able to leg one out a moment ago. Totally waves at a breaking pitch, and he's down on strikes for the final out of the inning. Gave up four runs as Oklahoma sent eight men to the plate. Last inning, scoring four runs on four hits. The big blow, the three-run home run by Madrin. That first pitch is taken for a ball by the leadoff hitter, Jackson Nicholas. Madrin had three hits in last night's game. Comes up with a big home run here tonight. Been a thorn in the side of the Horn Frogs here this weekend so far. Oh, for two for Nicholas. He grounded into a double play. His last time up. Good pitch from Hodges. And it's two and two. Got him. Pulled the string and had him out in front. Nicholas strikes out for the first out of the inning. Now well, there's another example of that good breaker from Hodges. See how much vertical drop it has. And when he's got it spinning well, which he has here at Lupton Stadium so far this season, it's a tough pitch to hit. Three strikeouts down tonight for Hunter Hodges. All three of them coming in the last three batters. Over. Corks a fastball there all the way back to the screen. Left fielder Kendall Pettis got things started last inning with an infield hit. Up in the count here, two balls and no strikes. Bunt took the fastball high and it's 3 0. Oh. Yeah. just pours one in. We're we'll on the count to 3 and 1. Walked him. Second consecutive time that Pettis has reached base. Runner at first one out for the catcher, Scott Mudler. Now if you're Oklahoma here in this situation, you're able to get a runner on with just one out. You're trying to extend as much as you can and really suck all the air out of Lupton Stadium. And Immediately countering TCU's two-run bottom half of the fourth with a four-run top of the fifth. Really a, a blow, not only to the confidence of the TCU dugout, but really took the fans out of it that are here in attendance as well. And you were talking earlier about home field advantage. But right now, tough series loss for the Horned Frogs in Lawrence and dropped the opening game at home to Oklahoma in last night's contest. And you're looking for some type of spark, some type of big play, big performance to get things going back in that direction. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, you know, you talk about a home field advantage, it usually is due to the crowd. And the way you can, as a visiting team, take the crowd out is just play from in front. And that's exactly what Oklahoma's been able to do. They did it last night after TC took the lead. They were able to get a sizable lead late in the... Last third of the game and hang on and 
here in this game. TCU took the 2 0 lead and it didn't last very long. And even though the crowd is sparse tonight because of the weather, they were still vocal after TCU scored the two runs in the bottom half of the fourth inning. You know, that's exactly what you're trying to do when, you, when you're on the road, especially a conference foe. You've documented well the series history between these two programs, but you're taking it as a bit of a challenge to go into somebody else's ballpark and steal some wins from them. There goes the runner to throw, not in time, as Silva tried to bring that throw down in a hurry, glanced off his glove. I'm not sure they would have had him anyway. And this is the one thing that Oklahoma has done well They've done a lot well this weekend, but steal bases in key situations like this. You know, see, it's a really good throw, and this is one that Silver just doesn't really look in all the way. He's trying to make that tag. I agree with you. I think Pettis gets his hand in there anyways. Yeah, I think Silver realized his only chance was to try and snatch it out of the air and slap the tag really quickly. But now a chance for Oklahoma to tack on a run. Still only one out, and the runner now at scoring position. And Oklahoma's used the stolen base effectively so far here in the first game and a half. Ludler, one for two at an RBI, or had a single rather, scored a run last inning. There's Pettis out at second base. On the ground, nice play by Robinson. They go to second and don't get anyone. Pettis able to scramble back to the bag before the tag could be made. And you can see Kirk Sarlos a little upset. I think he's more upset about Robinson not taking the out at first base than anything else. Yeah, and you see what Robinson's trying to do. He does a great job of snaring this one. It's hit hard by Mudler. And he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do, looking the runner back here, sees Pettis get far off, and it's not necessarily a bad decision, but at this point in the game, you're exactly right. You've got to take the out where you can get one. And as hard as that ball's hit, you've certainly got time to look the runner back to second and then make the throw across the diamond to first. Instead, there's no out recorded. There's Dave Long coming back out to the mound to talk to Well, now, still only one out. Runners at first and second. Nine-hole hitter. Jackson Willits takes his strike. Pettis out at second. Mudler's over at first base. Willits reached on an error his last time to the plate. Scored ahead of the home run. A little later on in the inning, he's also struck out. Bouncer to the right side. Gloved by Bowen, and he'll just take the out at first base. The runners advanced 90 feet, but now there are two outs. And you see Hodges going back to something soft here, and he gets Willits the chop at the first base. But, you know, this is one, if you get the out on the play prior, now you're out of the inning. Instead, you've got to deal with John Spikerman as the lineup flips back over once again, who's already one for three on the day. Come with a couple of men in scoring position. This is where Oklahoma excelled in last night's game, giving themselves that distance between themselves and the Horn Frogs. And for TCU, this is an out you've got to have here at this point in the game. The way things have been going, Spikerman fouls it to the screen off the left side. One for three for Spikerman. He had a single in the third. He's bounced to, into a field of choice and flown out to deep left field here today. Up now with a chance to add to the Sooner lead with a couple of men in scoring position. Spikerman takes it low and inside. You know, key moments in games come at very you know, different times and you just get the feeling that this is one if you're TCU. If you want to come back in this game, this you've got to keep it within striking distance here. Didn't get the call on a breaking ball that stayed away. You can see Spikerman just, he's been around long enough. He just lays off that backdoor breaking ball attempt. Well, and if it tells you a little bit too, already about the situation for Spikerman, he's already 
starting to shorten up a little bit. Swing and a miss, good pitch. Not just trying to get out of the inning without any further damage being done. Got him swinging, big pitch by Hodges. Went to the breaking ball, got the... And, uh, you know, what, for his sake, I just hope it's not that. That's one of those nagging injuries you see a lot of hitters get sometimes. There's a little bone in that hand. And it can fracture or it can break. And Yeah, you're right. I mean, it takes a long time to heal. There's nothing you can do about it except give it time. Swing and a miss. And Ryder Robinson down in the count now, 0-2. 0 for 2 for Robinson. He's grounded to third and flown out to left field tonight. Just two hits for the Horn Frogs. Throws the head of the bat at it, skies it to right field. Madrin coming on, plenty of time to camp underneath and make the catch. When TCU offense is really stalled against this Oklahoma pitching staff this weekend. Yeah, they really have, at least so far. Carter Campbell on the same pace from what we saw from Kyson. Witherspoon in last night's ball game. And with the performance that Witherspoon has, it really opens up this Oklahoma bullpen. Skip Johnson could do whatever he needs to do. Silva showed Bunt, took a strike. To the top of the strike zone. Just two hits for TCU tonight. Six last night, but of the six TCU hits in last night's ball game, only one from the fifth inning on. So from the middle of last game to the middle of this game, essentially a full game, DC's had a grand total of three hits against Oklahoma. You know, Anthony Silva squaring around a bunt and no one count tells you a little bit about what he's dealing with at the plate right now. Just trying to fight through it here. One and two, we've already seen that Campbell has the wipeout stuff, have to battle up. Foul that one off. Well, what Oklahoma's been able to do here in the first two games is they've countered every time TCU's been able to score. They've taken the crowd out, and then the bullpen has just been lights out for Skip Johnson. And there goes Silva as he swings at a pitch down and in. Fourth strikeout already for Campbell. And this is a pitch that Silva just was not missing at all for the first few weeks. It's a fastball knee high that's a good pitch to hit. And TCU, Kirk Sarlos and TJ Bruce, they're certainly hoping that they're guys that helped carry the torch through the best start in program history are able to make those little adjustments and get the timing right, get the offense back clicking once more. Carson Bowen takes down and in to even the count at one and one. Bowen walked his last time up. He's also flown out to center field. On the ground, hit hard, but right at the third baseman, Schneider, who corrals it, the throws low, but a good pick by McKenzie on the other side. He'll lead things off here. In the seventh for the Sooners against Hunter Hodges. And he swings at the first offering and fouls it back. Madrin has also singled tonight and struck out. So two for three for Madrin, who had three hits and reached on a walk yesterday. It was three for four with a walk. Chops this one to the right side. Going to be a tough play. Hodges gets over. Is he there in time? He is. Nicely done by Bowen and Hodges. Exactly the way you work on it in the preseason. Yeah, you could tell this is a tough one as soon as it comes off the bat. and It's in that kind of no man's land swinging drag bunt zone. Bowen able to range over and Hodges taking a route to first base and the Horn Frogs able to execute. And you're exactly right. They practice this every single day. Well, I thought it was a nice job by Carson Bowen. He got that ball and then immediately got it out of his glove. He didn't wait to try and gauge where Hodges was. He 
He got the ball in the glove and then just shoveled it right away, allowing Hodges to make the catch and then find the bag, not try to do both of those things simultaneously. Which obviously makes it a much harder play at first base. Fastball away. Evens the count at one and one on Easton Carmichael. Carmichael, a designated hitter tonight after starting last night's game behind the plate as a single tonight. Short hopped by Robinson. Two away. Robinson has just continued to look more and more comfortable over there at third base as he's gotten more reps and games under his belt. Talked a little bit about the struggles as far as pace of play is concerned with Willits on the other side at shortstop, the freshman, but here's one that Robinson, you see, is able to field that cleanly. Knows that Carmichael runs well and get it out of his hand. Michael Schneider at the plate. It's a breaking ball outside. Kind of the hero of the game last night for the Sooners with the big home run that gave the uh, Sooners the lead early. Yeah. came back to take the lead a little bit later, but that didn't last very long. Going with a four run seventh to win that one going away. Shoots this one through the right side for a base hit. He's just a good hitter. A lot of these hitters don't try to do too much, especially when they get a strike or two on them. No, and it's you know it's not by accident that you're second in the Big 12 and hitting as a team coming into this weekend. Oklahoma with a 322 average prior to yesterday's game. You know, they necessarily haven't done it with the long ball, although that's a difference in the game tonight. It's been playing good offense when they've needed to, especially off to that 4-0 unbeaten start in Big 12 play. Fouled off by Anthony McKenzie. 0 for 2 the walk. I'm just trying to get around a two out single from Schneider who's over at first base quickly ahead 0 and 2 here on McKenzie so she's Schneider over at first base good pitch strike three call started it outside brought it back over the outside corner no run here in this young season, but you see what they've done tonight. 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. Talked about it in the open, but TCU offensively, they've been so good in those opportunistic situations, and those are what come to play big when you get into these games that are back and forth and they're so close like this. It's been the Sooners so far through the, through the first game and a half now that have taken advantage of the situation more often than the Horn Frogs. Carter Campbell's given up just the one hit to Logan Maxwell since he entered the game back in the fifth inning. And second night in a row that the Sooner bullpen's really done a nice job against TCU after the Sooners have captured the lead here. That one fouled back by Brunson. He's grounded out twice, both times to the shortstop. 0 for 2 for Chase Brunson. See the 311 batting average for Brunson tells you how hot he was for the first week and a half of the season because he's been in a slump since then. And then still hitting 311. Behind in the count here, ball and two strikes. That one inside. Almost hit him. Full count now. If TC wants to get something going, they really could use a leadoff man to get on base. They haven't had many of them tonight. 
In fact, the only inning leadoff man's gotten on, they were able to score. And Brunson is struck out on a pitch that he thought was inside. And we saw one of those in last night's game with Brunson as well. And it was a pitch that was a strike in that he was heading down to first base with a walk on. You see this pitch. It certainly is in, but looks like it definitely catches the plate. And as a right-handed hitter, that pitch in from Campbell is going to look like it's coming into you. Jotnier goes after that pitch and comes up empty. Brunson's struggles continuing. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Chatnier 0 for 3. As he continues to struggle, now 0 for, uh, 0 for 20. Skies this one to right field. An easy chance for Madrin. And there are two quick outs here in the seventh inning. You talk about the offense, it's just two hits on the night for the Horn Frogs. They both belong to Logan Maxwell. Outside of that, everybody an offer on the card so far tonight. There's Maxwell in the hole for the Horn Frogs, but right now TC looking to get something going. Yeah, and even for him, the second one was the play up the middle where Willits lost his footing. Myers with a good punt. And he's going to beat it out. Good decision by the freshman. Drag, drug that bunt down the first baseline. Got it past the pitcher's mound. And with his speed, able to beat it out. Yeah, Myers has shown already in his young career, he's really comfortable taking the baseball with him like this. See, this exactly the technique you want to use. Gets a pitch that's in and just brings it with him down the first baseline. Puts it in a great area where Campbell would have to make a perfect play on it. He's unable to. That's exactly what you have to do in that situation when you need base runners. Myers getting himself over to first. The other thing I, I really liked about that was Myers got the bunt down, never looked at the bunt. He just put his eyes straight ahead and started running. Never looked to see where the bunt was, which slows you down. You don't think it would, but just looking for the ball sometimes can slow you down. He just put his head down and started running as fast as he could towards first base. Now Curtis Byrne with a chance with two outs and a runner at first base. In the air towards deep right center field. Garza Gongora makes the catch against the fence and that's the kind of weekend it's been for TCU. Yes. Carlos and the rest of this coaching staff on the other side Skip Johnson telling his Sooners to try and extend this lead, you've got a chance to put a final nail in the coffin, win the series here tonight. And that's what they're trying to do. Jackson Nicholas will lead it off. Get the first pitch for a ball. Oklahoma's second baseman. Rogers misses badly inside. 2-0 the count. It's 0 for 3. Bounced back to the box, hit into a double play, and struck out tonight. Good pitch from Hodges. Both teams getting their bullpens going here to see what Nicholas has done tonight. One count. Get a look at Zach Morris loosening up in the TCU bullpen. Not just trying to retire Nicholas to start the eighth inning here. And he loses him ball four. <laughs> Kirk Sarlos. He's wanting to know where that pitch was. You see that breaker just going around the plate a little bit too far. Kendall Pettis. He's been on base the last two times he's been up. Comes to the plate here with the runner on, nobody out. Showing bunt. Pulls the bat back, the runner takes off and he'll have a stolen base. 
This is the kind of offense the Sooners run these days, and it has been effective here this weekend. That's the third stolen base in this game. Not big stolen base numbers in terms of you know any one individual. Spikerman has nine, but uh, everybody else able to steal bases. They've got good speed. Let's see if Pettis does bunt here. Gets the bunt down, but foul, and it's one and one. Neither team hitting well with runners in scoring position tonight. TCU 0 for 4. Let's see what Pettis has done tonight. But Oklahoma just 1 for 9. The big difference in this game, a three-run home run. Bunted in the air, and it's caught. Nice play, Carson Bowen. He was like sitting right on top of home plate. And Bowen with a great hustle play here, selling out to make this catch in the air. Well, that's exactly how you draw it up if you're the Horn Frog. You see how far in Carson Bowen's playing. And it's the bunt defense that TCU's running. The first baseman really trying to take away that right side. Pitcher would have anything to the middle of the field or towards third base. With that one bunted back into the air, Bowen, who's already got the momentum crashing towards the plate, able to make the sliding play. And that's a great defensive uh, defensive job by Carson Bowen. Scott Mudler, the catcher at the plate now. Runner at second, one away. That ball in the dirt. And it's going to allow the runner to advance. So after the great play, the wild pitch ends up allowing the runner to get the third with only one out anyway. Yeah, and you know that's going to be frustrating in the dugout for Kirk Sarlos and Dave Lawn after the spectacular defense, just literally one pitch later. And that runner is able to move up. It's been a little bit of that for TCU over the last seven, eight calendar days. Team that's just shooting themselves in the foot in those situations that they really had been the ones capitalizing on through the first few weeks. Frogs forced to bring the infield in now with the runner over at third. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Mudler with a one for three night at a base hit, scored back in the fifth. It's bounced into fielder's choice, flown out to left field his other two times to the plate. Curtis Byrne has to go down to his knees and do just about anything he can to stop that ball from going back to the backstop or Oklahoma would have another run. And right now, that extra run looms large over at third base. You see the infield in for the Horn Frogs here. They're going to try and cut the run off at the plate. Big difference between a two-run deficit and three at this stage of the game. I know that sounds obvious, but... You know, certain times of the game early on, if you're down two or three, it doesn't really matter. But when you're down to your final six outs as a team offensively. That pulled way foul. This is way out in front of that. Oklahoma trying to take the series from TCU here tonight after winning last night. Seven to three. Frank looking to even things up and force a rubber game tomorrow afternoon. This will get the run in. Fly ball center field. Brunson ranging towards right center makes the catch. The runner tags and he will score as the throw is up the line. And again, Oklahoma takes advantage of the wild pitch. They get a leadoff walk, a stolen base. A wild pitch and a sacrifice fly to score this run. I yeah, see this one's hit way up into the air as Mudler gets underneath that slider. And Brunson, who's got a great arm out in center field, there's no real momentum behind this one. And Jackson Nicholas runs well. You're exactly right. The Sooners playing winning baseball right now and have an opportunity so hard to come by. And it's going to be those teams that are doing the little things better that are able to get the most. Now two outs, base is empty now. Jackson Willits, the shortstop at the plate. 
Morris deals the strike on the outside corner. Oh for three for Willits. Did have an RBI that came on an error back in the fifth inning. Check that the fourth inning. One one count on Willits. Two balls and a strike. On the ground, right side, gloved by Bowen. And that will do it for Oklahoma, but not before they had a run. Their pitch is high and away for a ball. Maxwell Toldy Robinson, the scheduled hitters, although it looks like there's a righty in the on deck circle. Almost hit Maxwell as he was able to spin out of the way at the last second. Two for two for Maxwell. He's got a couple of singles in the game tonight. Takes a strike on the outside corner. The Oklahoma pitchers have not made too many mistakes over the heart of the plate so far in this series. Their misses have been well off the plate. And Maxwell takes another strike. And it's two and two. And we talked about Klecker missing over the heart of the plate. And now a little argument going on as Kirk Sarlos getting a little heated with home plate umpire Michael Banks. see his lips there he's saying that hasn't been a strike for our guys how's that a strike for them now you get one more look at the pitch here coming in and Kirk Sarlo's argument is that this is down you can see the catcher Mudler behind the plate going down to get it it's got the plate ball just with a little bit of fade down and Campbell doing a nice job of staying away from Maxwell tries to Get him to chase one off the plate that time. Full count. TCU trailing by three. They need base runners here in the eighth inning. <laughs> Maxwell draws the leadoff walk. And that's a good at bat by Logan Maxwell to start the eighth inning for the Horn Frogs. That's a really good job by Maxwell of not getting amped up. Feel like a strike might be taken away from you. Very easy to try and overcompensate and swing at a pitch where you otherwise might not. Maxwell takes what he's given. He gets himself down to first base, and that's what the Horn Frogs have to have. This is what they were so good at over the first couple of weeks, just stacking at bats on top of each other. If you look at Jack Basir's into the game now for Peyton Tolley. Basir announces the pinch hitter, and here comes Skip Johnson. He's going to make a pitching change. College, a junior college in Florida where they played together and they all three transferred together they're all the same year and they all decided to come to OU at the same time. That's efficient use of the transfer portal if you're in the recruiting camp for the Sooners. The scouting report on Malachi is he's got the same mid-90s fastball that his brother has. His brother had that tight slider we saw last night. He's got more of a standard breaking ball, more of a curve ball than the slider. Is he, his uh, brother watching from the side over there after great performance last night. As he held the Horn Frogs in check in the latter part of the game. Allowing the Sooners to Score four runs in the seventh inning and win the ball game. Basir at the plate, the pinch hitter for Tolley. Lays off the first pitch down the way, ball one. Basir, hitting 280. Got the start as the designated hitter in last night's ball game for the Horned Frogs. 
was after that pitch came up empty. He was one for four. He had a base hit in the eighth inning. Prior to that, he struck out, grounded into a double play, grounded to first. Tapper back toward the mound. Witherspoon slips and falls on the wet turf, and all hands are safe. And if Warren Frogs were looking for a break, maybe that's it. They haven't had too many so far this weekend. No, there really haven't been, but you talk about opportunities, and you get a couple men on with no out, you will take it 10 out of 10 times. And especially now that the sun is completely down, it's dark here. That moisture going to continue to come up in the grass and see this time and time again where pitchers are coming in on a ball like that, lose your footing a little bit, and everybody's safe. So two men on now, nobody out for the Horn Frogs. Have to try and take advantage as you've got six outs left to play with offensively. Ryder Robinson will be the batter here. Maxwell out at second. The pinch hit of Brassier over at first base. Corner infield in looking for the bunt here from TCU. Robinson not bunting, fouls it back. Ryder Robinson, 0 for 3 tonight. He's flown out twice, once to left, once to right, and also grounded to Schneider at third base. Breaking ball is high. One and one. Big spot for the young freshman from Utah for the Horn Frogs. First baseman McKenzie now back. Schneider still in on the grass over at third. Just in case Robinson decides to bunt. This one's chopped over towards third. As good as a bunt is they'll get the out at first base, but the runners advance. That was a late swing by Robinson. It will go in the books as a sacrifice, but it works the same. Out at second for Sear. Robinson will go into the dugout. Now we've talked about the struggles of Anthony Silva and Carson Bowen, who will come up here back to back with opportunities to bring these couple of runs home. And talk about situations that can potentially bust you out of those cool streaks like this it's moments like this in the game you're trailing you need some spark offensively there's two men out there in scoring position potential for a big hit for silva takes the first pitch for a strike went to the breaking ball got it over silva with a walk tonight He's also struck out twice. Roll for two for Silva. One one count. Well, prior to the slump that Silva and Bowen, who's in the on deck circle, have been in, these are the two guys you wanted to play if you were a Horn Frog fan. That's a good sign. Silva lays off a pitch that was down and away. Been chasing some of these balls that have been off the plate, not that time. Here's the 2 1. Just foul. And I mean just foul. That ball was within inches of being a bases clearing double for Anthony Silva. Now you know how bad Anthony Silva wants this one to end up fair. You see him staying on it and going the other way with it. And this is just on the right side of that first base line. You see how close it was. Now he'll have to try and reset himself here. And battle into a 2-2 pitch against Malachi Witherspoon. Witherspoon shook off the sign. Now he, he's got the one he wants. Silva fouls it off. Went to the 
breaking ball there. The Silva with kind of an emergency hack as that pitch was coming back over the inside corner, able to make contact with it. Another 2-2 to Silva. Ducked underneath the breaking ball. Full count. That one almost came down into the strike zone. Yeah, it did. If, if Witherspoon gets this a little bit further down into the zone, probably rings Silva up here. See that breaking ball that pops up. A lot of times it'll freeze hitters, but we'll get a full count offering here now. On the ground, left side and through. Base hit, one run scores. Basir's being waved around. The throw to the plate is cut off. Two run score as Silva delivers a base hit to left field and it's a one run ball game. Now yeah, that's how you can get back in the groove if you're Silva. And he's, when he's going, he wears out that left side. See, this is a fastball in a full count that he's able to pull and gets a good hop over the glove of Michael Snyder. And Basir, who didn't necessarily get a great jump on this, gets waved around late. See, Pettis was a little slow getting that ball over in left field. It was a good job by John DeLore to recognize that and also recognize with the wet ball and the wet grass. At this point, they're scoring that run without a hit in the top half of this inning. One out. Bowen at the plate now for the Horn Frogs. Carson lays off a fastball. Silva picked up a couple of RBIs on that base and he's now got 16. Carson Bowen 0 for 2. Walks back in the fourth. He's grounded out and flown out his other two times to the plate. There goes Silva. The pitch is taken for a ball. Throw down to second base. Not in time. So Silva able to steal second base and get himself into scoring position. Fifth stolen base for Silva. First stolen base of the weekend for the Horn Frog. This hits a good jump from Silva. And he's out if Nicholas is able to hold on to this ball. The throw from Mudler behind the plate is a little bit onto the right side of second base. That forces Nicholas to come off of his spot. And Silva fortunate that that ball hits the dirt. Well, now a chance for Bowen to tie it up with a base hit. Silva takes off the throw down to third. Not in time. Silva steals third. And he's slow to get up. You can see him measuring that out at second base. Yeah, Witherspoon just never looks up at him. And we know Silva likes to be aggressive. And I think they're checking he went head first in. Looks like. Might have had some contact with Snyder, the third baseman. See Silva going head first in there, and that kind of head face area just going right into the left knee of Michael Snyder, who does a nice job of playing goaltender here and keeping that ball in front of him with the throw in the dirt. So Silva doing the work to get himself around to third base. With only one out, the tying run now at third. Oklahoma's going to bring the infield in. It'll be a 3-0 pitch to Carson Bowen. If you're Bowen, you're probably taking here, I would imagine. And then looking for a pitch you can drive to the outfield ball. He thought it was ball four. He got rid of the bat. He, he thought it was high, but home plate umpire Michael Banks run, brought up the right hand. And you get another look at this pitch here at 3 0. This is absolutely up. It's up around the letters. And we've seen plenty of pitches up there that have not yet been called tonight, so Bowen will have to come back in. You see him talking to TJ Bruce. TJ just trying to probably just say to him, look, forget that pitch. You just got to move on to the next one. No, you're absolutely right. But you know, it, there are worse situations to be in. It's a 3 1 count now that you've got the opportunity to hit in. You're still looking for something on a tee if you're Carson Bowen here. Infield in for Oklahoma. 
They will try to cut the run off at the plate. Bowen looking for a pitch. He can at least drive to the outfield to tie this game up. There's a breaking ball for a strike. That's the best breaking ball we've seen from Malachi Weatherspoon since he entered the game. He picked a pretty good time to throw it. And so now what you're thinking as the hitter is the last thing that you want to do is leave this in the home plate umpire's hands behind the plate. You're going to be defensive and protective of anything around the zone. Little looper, right field, that's going to drop in for a base hit. Silva scores, we're all tied up. So the two guys we were talking about struggling come through here in the eighth. Uh, just two absolutely big hits from Silva first and now Bowen who's able to poke this one into right field. And Anthony Silva doing the work to get himself around to third base. You talk about two guys that have been going through it a little bit at the plate, able to come through here in the eighth inning. And now Carson Bowen asking for Danny Wheat to come on out. I'm not sure what happened to him. I don't know if he pulled something rounding the base. Yeah, he looked a little ginger coming around first base. He took a big turn, was being aggressive. There was a lot of green out there for that ball to float in. Not sure if it was an ankle or whatnot, but Either way, they're coming back to the dugout. Get another look at this. See him, that right foot just kind of slides out underneath him as he's going around first base and has to put the brakes on hard there. Well, you talked about, you know, not only the cleats got the mud in it, that base is covered with mud and it's just, it's kind of slick. And he didn't step on the corner of it. He stepped on the top of it. And there you get a really good look at it. And that spike just slipped over the top. Yeah, and just to give you a little bit of sense that on the non nights like this, your, your cleats become so heavy. You can see it's just a thick layer of clay that you're running on. And everybody's dealing with it out there, which is part of playing in, in a wet environment. Well, what an outstanding response by the Horde Frogs here in the eighth inning. Chase Brunson will bat now. And he takes the strike on the inside corner. Well, Danny Wheat and Kirk Sarlos didn't even get halfway to first base, and Carson Bowen was just waving it back into the dugout. He was like, no, I'm, I'm good. And that's not surprising. Because he caught just about every game. And there's another high strike that Brunson thought was up above the letters. And so did the TCU bench. They are not at all happy. T.J. Bruce really yelling at home plate umpire Michael Banks. Yeah, it's a breaking ball that starts up above the letters. There's just no way that it's in the strike zone. and It's one that hasn't been there so far tonight. Brunson lays off. We saw Brunson 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs to short. He's also struck out looking. Caught on a pitch that was on the inside corner his last time up, which froze him. Finally, similar pitch in the same spot. This time the call goes TCU's way. And now it's two and two on Brunson. Little flare to the middle of the diamond. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Carson Bowen is going to try for third, and he is going to be out by a mile. There's the throw from Garza Gongora right on the money. And I'm surprised that he would try to do that. But a good job by Brunson at least to get himself in scoring position. Now you see Brunson just going down to get this one. It's another slider. And for Garza Gongora here, the center fielder, he's coming in on a dead sprint. It's a great ball to throw on and you see Bowen immediately knows makes the mistake on that decision there earlier in this inning here's another guy at the plate that's been struggling oh for his last 21 Peyton Chatnier and boy wouldn't he like to give TCU the lead here with a base hit to break that oh for string that one goes all the way back to the backstop and Brunson's going to hightail it down the third base on the wild pitch. Well, you've been talking about it's been the TCU pitching staff that have been allowing some of those free bases that Oklahoma's taken advantage of. And 
No better time for the Horn Frogs to do the same. Try and steal one out here with a potential four spot of their own if Brunson's able to come home. With two outs, the infield will stay back. Shotnick comes up empty on that swing. It's a ball and a strike. You see, that's a really good slider there. He starts it out looking like a fastball strike on the outside part of the plate and just snaps it off. Keeping it away from the bat of Chatagne. 0 for 4 with a walk for Chatagne. Told you 0 for 21. Hasn't had a hit since early in the Kansas series. And he's down in the count here, 1 and 2. Here's the one-two pitch from Witherspoon. Strike three call, Chatagnier strikes it for the Horn Frogs, looking to keep this game tied at five. Wants to get his team back in the dugout as quickly as possible to keep the momentum on the TCU side of things here. Here's a strike on the outside corner. Good pitch from Morris. Morris came on last inning, got the final out of the eighth. Faces the top of the order here. Rocco Garza gun. Gora up for the first time. We'll check this as a pinch hitter. Carter Frederick pinch hitting. Hitting 323 on the year. Drives this one to straightaway center field and deep. Back goes Brunson at the wall. It's gone. So the pinch hitter, Frederick, drives one out. That's his second home run of the year, and he gives Oklahoma the lead again. Uh, you see it's a change up over the heart of the plate by Morris, and it just catches too much of it. Frederick, this is so tough to do coming cold. Out in the top half of the ninth inning, he stays on it and drives it out to the deepest part of the ballpark here at Lupton Stadium. And this is what the Sooners have done so far through the first two ball games. Anything that TCU's done offensively, they've matched it and they've matched it quick. Have not allowed the Horn Frogs to hold on to any momentum. A huge blast by Carter Frederick. A pitch up and in for a ball. So Spikerman, who had been the starting center fielder, came out injured. Garza Gungora never got to the plate. It was a defensive replacement. They pinch hit for him in the ninth, and Frederick homers to give them the lead. And you're right, I mean, it's happened. It happened last night, it's happened today, and happened again today with that uh, home run. Two for four for Bryce Madron. He had a three run home run earlier in the game. That was the difference in this game. And he, Draws a walk here. So the first two men have gotten on base here. The home run and now the walk and that will draw a mound visit. Throw over to first base and Madrin back to the bag. Madrin had the three run home run earlier. He's also singled and now walked. Oklahoma's been stealing bases this weekend. Let's see if they put him in motion. That one flipped foul. To the very top of the screen, atop the first base dugout. One for three for Carmichael tonight. He had a single. That came back in the four run fifth inning. He's also drawn a walk. Throw over to first base, and again, Madrin able to get back. That's through the left side, base hit. Runners at first and second, still nobody out. Second hit of the game for Carmichael. 
And Oklahoma continues to just swing the bat well here this weekend. And you see Carmichael able to just wait on this one a little bit. It's a slider that doesn't quite slide as much as Taylor was hoping for, and he's able to line it in the left. And here comes Kirk Sarlos once again. He's going to make another pitching change here. We'll come to the plate. Schneider had a big two-run home run in the game last night. He squares around the bunt here. Drops the bunt down the third base side. Robinson will field. Gets it over to first base where Shotnier covers for the out. But both runners advance into scoring position. That's exactly what you're trying to do if you're Oklahoma in that situation. Now you'll have a couple opportunities to bring home that valuable insurance that's out there on second and third base. Over at third, Madrin. Carmichael's out at second. Anthony McKenzie will be the batter. Michael Banks, I'm not sure what the holdup here is. Kirk Sarlo's coming out of the dugout. And I think they're going to intentionally walk McKenzie. And that's what the discussion was. So an intentional walk to McKenzie will load the bases. And so they're going to intentionally walk McKenzie and then now go right back to the bullpen one more time. Well, another pitching change coming on for TC. And this was a spot last year where Abelt excelled, able to get strikeouts when he needed it, ground balls when he needed it, but he's been struggling like a lot of these pitchers for TCU so far this season. Big insurance runs out there for Oklahoma. That's cute off the end of the bat. Slow roller played by Robinson. He's only got one play. It's the first. It works like a squeeze bunt. And a big insurance run. It's now 7-5 Oklahoma. And this is just bad luck. It's been the way it's been going for TCU lately. Now you see the pitch works for Ben Abel. Just gets that squibbed off the end of the bat. But there's no other option for Ryder Robinson other than go to first base. And he does it well. But Madrin sliding home. And there's that big insurance run that Skip Johnson in Oklahoma was looking for. So now it's a two-run lead. Runner still at second and third. One more out to get for Abelt and the Horn Frogs as Kendall Pettis comes to the plate. Takes a breaking ball for a strike. That run, by the way, charged to Zach Morris. Missed inside. One for three for Pettis tonight. Abelt trying to keep the game right here. This is low. Two balls and a strike on Pettis. Pettis' lone hit came leading off the fifth inning. He singled up the middle. It was the first hit of the game for either side. Well, check that. They actually had a hit in the third inning. When it started the uh, four-run fifth inning for the Sooners, who led throughout the middle of the game until the eighth inning. TCU scored three times to tie it at five, but they've given up two here in the ninth. A belt. Trying to get the last out of the inning. Almost hit him. Pettis had a jackknife out of the way and the count's full three and two. It'll be the middle part of the TCU batting order when they come to the plate in the bottom half of the ninth trailing by at least two runs. Payoff pitch coming to Pettis. Another slow roller. Robinson has to get rid of it in a hurry. Gets it over in time to get the final out. Two little slow rollers. To th the thing that this Horn Frog team has been afraid of thus far in the season. It'll take some work here against Malachi Witherspoon, who's out for another inning of work. 30 pitches so far 
for Witherspoon. TCU able to touch him up last inning, and Sam Myers takes the first pitch for ball one. Myers, Byrne, Maxwell, and then some for the Horned Frogs if they wish to come back here in the bottom half of the ninth. One for four for Myers. Two and out. Oh. Myers had a base hit his last time up. He dragged the bunt past the mound on the right side and beat it out back in the seventh inning. That high strike. In the latter part of this game, Michael Banks has been calling it. It's caused a lot of consternation in that TCU dugout. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss, it's 2 and 2. You need at least one man to get on here to give yourself a chance if you're the Horn Frogs. Weatherspoon runs the count all the way out. Payoff pitch coming to Sam Myers. Line towards center field. Madrin coming on, makes the catch. One out here in the ninth. Bryce Madrin now in center field as Carter Frederick stayed in the game. He's in right. You look at the swing by Myers. See, this one just ties him up a little bit too much. And Madrin able to come in on it and make the play. Curtis Byrne at the plate now. With one out and the base is empty. Almost hit him. That fastball was up and around his head. There's a strike, and it's one and one on Curtis Byrne. <laughs> Curtis has been on three times, hit by the pitch twice, reached on an error. His only time he's retired is in the seventh. He flew out. Shoots that one foul. The far end of the Oklahoma dugout. Scattered a bunch of people down there. Now the count of ball and two strikes on Curtis Byrne. Pitch has been called a strike tonight. For the moment, Curtis Burns still alive. It's two and two. Q shot off the end of the bat. Trickles foul. Frogs need somebody to get on base to bring the tying run to the plate. Missed inside, full count. We see Byrne hanging on here, making this an interesting at bat between him and Witherspoon. Went down and spoiled that. Last slider to extend it. Masuda does now full count. Bouncer to short. Comes up nicely for Willits to throw across in time. And TCU's down to their final out. Last hope for the Horn Frogs. Logan Maxwell at the plate. This should do it on the ground the second. Right there, Nicholas, ball game over. The Sooners come back to win it in the top of the ninth.
And they take the series from the Horn Frogs, winning the first two balls. Welcome to the streets where the hustle never sleeps Concrete jungle where every corner's got secrets to keep From the neon lights to the graffiti on the wall This is the life we live where we stand tall In the heart of the city where dreams collide We navigate the alleys with swagger and pride From the buskers on the corner to the vendors in the stalls This is the rhythm of the streets where the wild calls Street life where the beats never stop From dusk till dawn We're on top In the chaos and the noise We find our groove This is the street life This is how we move From the skaters on the sidewalk to the b-boys in the square This is where we come alive, where we show we care With every step we take, we leave our mark In the tapestry of the streets, where we embark From the stoop conversations to the midnight races This is the life we live in all its different faces In the rhythm of the streets, we find our flow This is the street life, where we let it all go Never stop from dusk till dawn. We're on top in the chaos and the noise. We find our groove. This is the street life. This is how we move.